to pay the opponents to come and fight us. So like the promotions were taken, we were paying thousands of dollars for the opponents to come in and fight us. And um, you know, we got to pay our own travel and everything. So we just, we invested a lot in my first couple fights to, to try and, you know, we, we pretty much took a risk. We put all our chips in. And um, I had three pro fights in Tijuana. Oh yes, Tijuana. And um, I came back to the US one day. After every fight, I tried to come back home. One of my biggest fears was always that something would happen to one of my siblings while I was gone, you know? Well, something happened to one of my siblings, but while I was here, and um, I just remember being at the gym, and I get that phone call, and I, I pick up the phone. I just got done from training, so I pick up the phone. My dad's calling. I was like, hello? He's like, hey, is Christopher with you? And I was like, no. Why? Is he not home yet? He's like, no. He's like, call his friends to see where he's at. I was like, oh, okay. And he, at the time, he was in track, so I'm thinking, like, oh, he hadn't got home yet. So I'm about to hang up, and he said, because they're saying he got shot. And now I'm thinking, like, no, he didn't. And he's like, yeah, they're saying they heard it on the scanner, yada, yada. And so I hang up, and as soon as I hang up, I see my phone blowing up. Messages, messages, messages. Hey, bro, hope your brother's okay. Hey, man, prayers for you guys. Hey, everything's gonna be okay. And I, was, and I asked someone, like, hey, what are you talking about? And they're like, have you not heard? And I was like, no, they said your brother got shot. And so then I, was, I exited out, and I went to go call my dad. Well, he called me, and he's like, yeah, you know, it was him. So now I'm thinking he got, like, shot in his leg or in his hand or, you know, just shot his finger off. And so I'm like, oh, okay, well, where did he get shot? And my dad got quiet. And I was like, and then he told me, he said he got shot in the neck. And I cracked that. Like, it was, like, I felt like the blood rushed out of my body. And, um... I turned and I looked at my friends and I'm like, my brother just got shot. And at this time I was in garden at the boxing gym. And um, I told myself, all right, well, I'll be there in a bit. I jumped in my car and I, within like 20 minutes, I was in Ulysses, I was hauling. Well, on the way to Ulysses, my mom calls me. And she said, hey, you know, did you leave already? And I'm like, yeah, I'm on my mom's way to Ulysses. She's like, oh, okay, well, drive safe, you know, be careful. So I'm like, oh, she doesn't know. Chris got shot. She's like, what? Chris got shot. And then she's like, no, 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 see. And I'm like, no, I swear, like, he got shot. And then, like, she hung up. I get to Ulysses, and it's like a big old crowd in front of the, the hospital. And so I know, I'm like, oh, it's real. And I went in and see my brother. We live watched him to Wichita. And then, uh, we were there for like six days with him, and then he passed away. Well, it's crazy because the night before he passed away, they told us that there's a possibility that, because the way it, it hit him, the bullet went into his ear, came out through his ear, and uh, they said the way that it hit him, that, that he might not. They pretty much call it being a vegetable, like where you're not able to do anything on your own. You know, you're just, you just lay there. And so me and my dad talked about it, and uh, he said, you know, I just don't want my son living on a machine. If he, if, you know, everybody's gonna have their friends over and all this stuff and my youngest son's just gonna be laying in a bed. And so, you know, I, I told my dad, I said, yeah, you're right, I agree. And that moment I went to my mom's room, which is right next door in the hospital, or in the hotel. And I didn't tell none of the other classes this, but she said she felt a hand like this and we lifted up her shirt and you could see like like this, it was goosebumps. And then like, you hear running down the hallways and knocking on the door. And so we're like, like we're not in the mood to kill nobody. So we waited, my little sister waited by the door. And when we heard, she opened it again and nobody was there. And we're in the middle of the hallway. So I'm like, there's no way somebody, you know, somebody's running that fast. And so we're just like, what the heck? It started pouring and raining. We get to the hospital the next day and they tell us that, that I'm sitting in there with my mom and my dad and they, they walk in and they tell us that it goes around like 12, 22, that, that his brain, that he flatlined. And so like, you know, just watching my friends go through that. I was going through it myself, right? When now uh, imagine, you know, when you guys go through stuff and you're hurting and your heart hurts and, and you just have that God, why feeling? I, 
I never asked God why. But you have that feeling of like, like why is this happening? And then you got the ones you love and the ones you wish would be there for you also hurting. So they can't be there for you and you you can't even be there for them. And, you know, so it was just a lot. It was a lot to take in as a as an 18 year old. You know, and I had a we had to go into the room and my dad told my brother and my sister like, I think you guys should go in there and see them and see him. And just like watching them break down, watching their their like that's when it hit them like they understood. Just watching them break down. Um, she took a toll on me. I thought that hurt until funeral day, and I'll always look at this as for this. I didn't realize how many people were there until they will, they were willing to come to the front and I stood up and turned around and I see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. There was like people standing all the way in the back because there wasn't even no more chairs, you know? And so like, just to know that that our community stands together like that is, is pretty cool and that he had an impact, an impact on that many lives. And um, I think everything like really, really took a toll when they started lowering him into the ground. And it always does. When you gotta sit for a show at a funeral, that's that's what changes your mind and your perspective on life. And um, we're all bound to go one day. We all got a death thing, you know. That's what that's what just makes life so beautiful. Is that people, everyone's so scared to die, but that's the only thing that is guaranteed in life is death. You know, just. That's why it's so important to live your life and to to enjoy the fruits of life because enjoy it more than, than than you know because next thing you know you're gonna be you're gonna take so much for granted and you don't even understand that you're taking it for granted until you're taking it for granted you know what I mean until it's gone um, everybody's gonna go through something in life everybody has adversity it's just what you do after that 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 makes it Conor McGregor. He had his own adversity. He was a plumber. Like, he was broke. Um, that's what I'm not thinking right now. But there's a bunch of athletes that they go through stuff and they push through and they use that as motivation. It sucks to say it, but had Chris never passed, I probably wouldn't have the mentality that I do today. Now, would I go back to have my brother? Yeah, 100%. But one thing I've also learned is that when, when certain things like that happen, you can't change them. The quicker you learn to accept it and understand it, you know, the more the more you learn to to adjust and to to I want to say elevate and grow. You know what I mean? Because it's coming. Everyone's gonna everyone's gonna experience losing someone close to them someday. It's it's a given. You know what I mean? We're all gonna go one day. But what do you do while you're here? That's 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 the importance. Is is what what do you make happen in life while you're here? You know what I mean? What, what's your goals? What are you doing to pursue them? What are you doing to chase them? Like, you know what I mean? It's all that stuff that goes into it. And um, I don't know, like you guys are, what, they're what, what grade are they? These are uh, nice. freshmen, sophomores. Juniors. You guys Juniors. got your the rest of this year. So the freshmen, you got this year and then three more years to figure it out what you want to do before you get to college. Because I don't think anybody wants to go to college and just go to college just to go to college. You want to go to college to, to know what you're going to do after, you know what I mean? Unless you're like, boy, you don't want to cut hair, but that's right. But, you know, it, um, you got to, you don't want to just get so lost in that, in that, I'm not going to say don't party because you guys are high schoolers, you're going to do it regardless, you know what I mean, for the ones that do. But pay attention to what you're doing. Enjoy your time with your family. Enjoy the time with your friends and your peers. And have your goals set, have your, have your goals set, because... Money isn't everything, but money does a lot. The reason I'm, I chase my goals to make my money is to because I want to provide for my family and them not have to worry about anything. And dad wants a new car, all right, I got you. You want an Impala? Okay. Mom wants a house? Okay, I got it. We'll give them take a trip, I'll take care of it. Like, I want to be able to do that for my family. And I'm able to start doing stuff for my family now, but what bothers me is that I lost a sibling before he could see me succeed and before he could see me, you know, start. Like he didn't even get to see me sign with, with ESPN and that would have been big for him. I bought a, a 2013 Chrysler and he was, he was proud of that. Oh, you're gonna take this cruising and then, you know what I mean? That was just, that, that, that made him proud. So I would just know, 
like what would make him proud today but um you know i want to just you know just tell you guys to chase your goals you know be be mindful of others what people say to you today ain't gonna matter in five years it's not gonna matter in three years it's not gonna matter in six months you know what i mean people i don't know why people are bullies i've never understood it I've been getting bullied for like the past three weeks for getting knocked out. Do I care? No. Did I care? Yeah, for two days. Can I change the fact that I got knocked out? No. I got I got stretched. I ended up on the floor like this, cross-eyed. Can I change that? No. What can I do though? Move forward, learn from it, and adjust, you know, go forward. I can't stay mad about it, you know. Sometimes in life there's things that you can change and things that you can't change. And the things that you can't change, learn to accept it, understand it, and move forward. And that's called growth. You know what I mean? You can't grow from something if you haven't been through it. Like when people tell you, oh, are you ready to to go skydiving? You'll never be ready until you've already done it. You know? You can try to prepare for it, but you can't be ready for something that you've never done. You know what I mean? It's once you do it, it's experience. Life is all about experiencing, growth, learning. That's why older people are so much wiser because they've been through a lot, they've experienced, they've experienced a lot, you know? And so, I don't know, I'm grateful to be where I'm at today. I'm grateful to be from this is Kansas. But I just wanna tell you guys, chase your goals. Think life is gonna throw you curveballs and life gets ugly, but it's always, there's always rainbow for the rainbow. And if there was no ugly, there'd be no good, or no beautiful, if there was no bad there'd be no good if there was no short there'd be no tall it's you have we have to have the dark days to to appreciate the sunny ones a little more you know what i mean so yeah i don't know just learn to learn to grow learn to adjust to to appreciate what you got if you guys want to do something do it I'm, I'm telling you like half my teachers didn't believe me like i know these ones did I know you believed in me, but you just didn't believe me. You, know? <laughs> you believed in me. You knew I could do it, but you just didn't think I was, I was gonna actually take off. You know? I just, understand that. I was telling uh, another class, I said, how many of you guys are 17?